Hey, Kevin from JJ Hat Center. Today we're going to have a, um, a simple, short, but to the point video. We're going to talk a little poquito bit about our felt hats. You know, felt hats, western hats, fedoras, felt hats, you know, not wool, felt, fur felt. Are felt hats uh, waterproof or not? What's the deal? You know, um, they water repellent. Um, can you wear them out there in the rain or not? I mean, what's the deal? Are they? Are they not? What's the answer? Um, can somebody break it down to me in a non-sales speak kind of a way, in plain English, so I can know what the real deal is without any BS? Um, well, sir, you come to the right place. Um, the only thing is with. With that uh, truth and knowledge comes, uh, there's always a small price to pay. Um, I put new strings on my other reverends, so I'm really interested in playing it a little bit. So I'm going to do some kind of horrible uh, jazz version of uh, Ace of Spades. See how it works. Uh, you are born to lose. Penguins just for fools That's the way I like it, baby I don't wanna live forever Oh, don't forget that joke If you like to gamble I tell you I'm your man Officially the worst thing I ever did on this channel, but that's okay. It's all about taking risks, you know. I wasn't really in the mood for like working on a real song today. I just wanted to goof around a little, I guess. Um, all right. The deal is, um, okay. Most of these hats are made of, you know, with the exception of some like really vague things, you know, like when they say a fur blend, you don't know what that is, you know. A fur slash wool blend, a fur different kinds of fur blend. That's what it's kind of suggesting, right? It's not a, a wool fur blend. It's a fur blend. So they get away with this weird, you know, terminology and stuff. But if it says 100% fur felt somewhere, that's what you want. It should say that somewhere. If it doesn't say it on the hat itself, it should say it on the uh, the company's, you know, website with the specs for the hat. Um, how can you tell? It's not always easy to tell. Sometimes it's deceiving. Uh, generally, fur felt feels softer. It doesn't have itchiness to it. It's like if you put it against your cheek, there's almost none of that itchiness that wool has. Um, yeah, so it's warm, it's dense, but it's not itchy. Um, wool is going to be like that, you know, like a scratchy scarf or an old scratchy sweater from the attic, you know, little pieces of like burlap in it and stuff, you know, it's like horribly scritchy, scratchy feeling. Well, wool will give you that against the skin or a sensitive part of the skin. Fur felt? No. 
The thing is, if you're allergic to wool or anything like that, these hats, you don't generally touch the fur anyway. You touch the leather. The leather is going around the surface of your skin. You're touching there. Um, some people, their hairline or scalp might touch here if they're bald or something. There's generally a silk lining there, a satin lining, 9 out of 10 times. Probably 99 out of 100 times, unless we're talking about a, a crushable hat or wool felt crusher or something, you no know, linings. I pull my linings out. Um, most of them just pull out. I have a lot of hair, so I don't worry about sweating the top of the hat up and making a sweat stain through there. Um, and I run around up and down the stairs, you know, all the time, wearing the hat at work, drink a lot of coffee. Uh, I get a lot of uh, messages on my old videos, you know, this guy's cracked out of his mind, or this guy's tweaking or something. Um, because I used to be kind of like a workaholic and I drank a lot of coffee, like too much. And uh, I was kind of wired at work, just bouncing around, jittery and stuff, you know. But uh, no more. Uh, usually one cup, sometimes two, but I'll spread them out, you know. But uh, the two is pretty infrequent. It's usually just the one in the morning with breakfast and that's it. So, um, yeah, these hats can be rainproof material, like fur felt. Okay, if it's fur felt, you kind of covered there. The thing is, fur felt really ranges. It can range from totally bulletproof waterproofing to like the extent where you don't even have to blink an eye. You could just like, you know, let snow and rain just pour on it as much as you want. You know, like some of the Akubra hats are like that. Some of the thicker, heavier Western hats with better felt. Um, Akubra. A lot, you know, a lot of their stuff's like that, almost all their stuff. Um, they're really, really good in the rain. Um, it doesn't have a lot to do with, like, is it beaver, is it rabbit, is it this or that. That's not what it has to do with. It has to do with more like a well-made hat. The hat is blocked correctly. The felt itself, they didn't cut any corners. Generally, what they do to cut corners, the easiest way is to make a hat thinner. So if it's, you know, such and such millimeters thick, let's say, I don't know, uh, I'm just throwing out numbers just for, you know, I have no idea how thick a hat is, but let's say it's uh, 3.2 millimeters thick. If they made it uh, 2.6 millimeters thick, nobody would notice and they would make, you know, a whole bunch more percent profit that year because they're using less fur, um, making more hats for less money. If they shrink it down to uh, you know, uh, 1.9 millimeters, um, the hat might feel lighter weight and softer. People will buy it even more. The thing is, um, when felt is super thin, it curls. It does a curl. When it gets wet, even steam will curl it up. There are hats that, you know, the felt is so temperamental that I don't even want to steam it. Um, usually they're long brims. They're thinner, softer felt, they have raw edges. And if you look at the hats, they could be perfect out of the box, but the first time they touch steam, they start curling. And they curl into points, kind of like these like little points. They curl into like points. And they do this thing where, you know, they roll up and you have this messed up thing on, in your hat, you know. Um, the more you try to steam it, the more you're making the hat worse. You're trying to steam it and flatten it with weights. It does absolutely nothing because the felt is thin. It can't actually hold up its own weight. Um, and maybe it doesn't have enough stiffener in it. You know, sometimes the stiffener is good because it holds the hat in place. If you want this flange to be up like this, it's the stiffener that's holding it up like that. Okay. Partially it's the way they shaped it, but it's this stiffener that really holds it. It's like a kind of a thin plastic shield that you spray on there. Okay, that has to be good and the felt itself. You have to look at the side of it. It has to be nice and thick. Um, then the hat doesn't curl. If you got regular old rabbit fur felt, it can be great. As long as you use enough of it, you could have um, people, you know, buff it into like suede finishes and you know, really velvety things that feel just like beaver um, and do really, really better than a super thin, thin piece of beaver felt that's so thin that it's like aluminum foil. Um, 
pets can be brain proof, but if they can't hold up their own weight, that's not good, you know. Like this hat can hold the weight of this guitar pick very easily. You know? No problem. Okay, but if I put something a little heavier on there, it can't. It's just not gonna work. Um, you know, like my coffee cup, you know, obviously it's not gonna hold that. No matter how much I try to balance it, it might maybe probably not. Okay, there's only a certain amount of weight that a hat will hold. Um it's that first cup. Anyway, um yeah, you know, you don't need it to hold as much as a coffee cup, um, but you need it to hold more than a guitar pick. So it's somewhere in between there, you need that stiffener, which means hat has to go down the assembly line has to be stiffened correctly, just a nice, you know, don't skimp on it. Um, sometimes it's nice to leave the crown soft and give the brim some stiffening so that they have some snap. Stiffening a brim gives you snap. Um, you can do it yourself, but what you need is good equipment. You need a steam source, good steam source, packing tape to dust the hat, Ultra hold hairspray, or even better, um, hat stiffener for felt stuff like scouts, or you know, you could go to Man Hat Co. M A N H A T C O, like Man Manny's Hat Company, Manny's they used to be called, Manny's Millinery or Man Hat Co. Buy a can of uh, it's an aerosol can with a plain generic white label with black print on it, hat sizing. Um, it costs a lot more than hairspray, but uh, if you want to get the right stuff, get it. Make sure you're getting something for um, felt, not for straw, when you get stiffener. Other stiffener comes in powder and you mix it. Um, you could mix it, you know, with water and put it in a spray bottle. Um, but uh, hat stiffener is going to be essential, you know, a lot of times to getting a good shape and holding the shape. When they manufacture a hat, you need there to be a good piece of felt, they can't skimp on the felt. You have to have some standards there with how much felt they use. And stiffening has to be there too. And it has to be flanged properly or, you know, blocked properly. The shape has to be done correctly. Then when some weight of rain comes, it can look okay the next day. Okay, so let's put it this way. We don't care if our hats leak water or don't leak water so much. What we really care about, down to the core, is that our hat, after the rainstorm, after it dries and everything is blown over, we want that hat to look okay the next day, right? Okay, that's what it's more about. So a hat can be rainproof, but it can be so thin that it just gets way down flat, and if you try inverting it, you know, it doesn't dry with a nice curve because it's just so thin, it's just doing something else naturally. And that's just, I'm pushing this now gently. That's what shape the hat's going into naturally, you know? You put your hand on it, can um, So, yeah, um, it, it's more having to do with the hat having a good reputation. You know, brands like Celentino or Kubra, they're very, very consistent. Um, Stetson is a great, great company, but their hats are not always consistent. Their sizing is a little bit, you know, like you know, 7 one eighth will be, and the next 7 one eighth will be a little bit bigger. Some hats will be softer, some will be a little harder. Um, some hats, you can know that they get good ratings, they're always consistent. You know, things like uh, Akudra are not the softest hats, but you know they'll take rain like a champ, um, like the Style Master or the Bushman or something. Those are hats that will, okay. That brings me to um, different companies, different types of hats. So Akubra is one company that just does great with good felt. So their felt, generally in almost everything they make that's fur felt, does well, except for straws and things that are not meant for rain, okay? Um, they put in a little extra oomph when they, they make their stuff. Uh, they also, I think, invented some proprietary machines that you know, make felt and things like that, you know. And they have different ingredients. They, they might use, like, wild hair or something that's, you know, a little bit more uh, rugged or exotic, you know, maybe because they're not a North American company. Maybe their uh, fur ingredients are superior. Who knows? 
Um, wild hair is an ingredient that's very, very nice. It's a little expensive. The pre-bankruptcy porcelinos were made from wild hair, um, wild hair and uh, nutria. Um, so, you know, good felt is where I'm getting at. If you see a felt that's got a velour finish and it's thick, you know, that's probably going to be good in the rain. The beaver finishes, you know, the uh, kind of shiny, hairy finishes, they're generally higher in half. The velours, um, velours from Biltmore, like the Golden Pheasant collection. Um, what else? The, uh, Celentino stuff, they make long hair beaver stuff, they make short hair beaver, they make velour stuff, any of that stuff with those fancy finishes from those companies, they're going to be awesome. Um, Stetson is a company that has lots and lots and lots of hats that do really, really well. Um, there's very few complaints that I ever have about them, but I think they make so many hats that their hats can sometimes be a little inconsistent. Um, Definitely sizing wise, you know, that's the biggest thing about them is that their sizes, they generally run like a average, you know, kind of true to size, but from one hat to the next, one could be a little big, one could be very big, one could be dead on 718. Um, it sometimes helps me, like, you know, if somebody's between sizes, I say, wait, 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 and I'll go upstairs, I'll get two more of them. Uh, I'll even eye them out. I'll try to find ones where the oval looks a little bigger. I'll bring them down. I'll let the guy try two more, and they always feel different. One of them might be bigger, and you're like, bingo, that's it. How'd you do it? So sometimes the fact that they run a little, you know, inconsistent helps the sale. Other times not, I guess, you know. Um, but, um, yeah, I, that's why I always say for anything, always go big if you're in doubt. You know, if you're between sizes, don't say, eh. I'm kind of closer to that seven. I'll just let it stretch. I can always have Kevin stretch it. No, no stretching. Don't stretch. Stretching is bad. Buy it big, pat it down. It's very non-invasive. It's just, boom, you pick up the back, you put something in there, a little sticker, put it back, you forget it's there. The longer the sticker piece, the shorter it is, the tighter or the less tight the hat gets. Um, you can pull it out if you want. This is not an area anybody ever sees. Um, it's not a big deal. So it's under the leather. Go big if you're in doubt. Um, for me, if I cut my hair, my hat sizes differ. The only way I could keep up with that is going on the big side, really big, and having the ability to tighten it up. Okay, so that's one of the tips. Go big. Don't ask me questions like Kevin. Um, I found a hat that's a 7, but I'm really a 718. Can you stretch it? No, I don't want to. Don't buy it. Um, most likely that hat will fit two sizes too tight, not one. If it's a vintage hat, you know, the leathers dehydrate, they get smaller. If it's a hat made by a certain company in Italy, it runs another size hole, size too small. So it'll wind up being mega small, and stretching that much makes the hat if it looked new before, it'll make it look old afterwards. Lots of crease marks, stretch marks. The, um, the leather sweat band can crack. That's my disclaimer before I start cranking. I say, all right, the leather band looks okay, but there's always a chance it can split, it can crack. Are you okay with that or you want to stop? You know? So I tell them, you know, we could always patch it. We could put a little piece of leather in there and patch it up if we need that, but there's a chance it will happen. Most of the time it doesn't break, but, you know, one out of every, you know, 50 hats, it might tear or something. And then there's also the ones where I could just tell it's going to tear. They're just so dry and flaky. I'm like, all right, listen, as soon as I start stretching that, the leather's going to tear. It's split in a few places or a couple places. Are you okay with that? You know, and they'll be like, well, you know, I couldn't wear the thing at all before. So, yeah, I guess so. I'm okay with it, you know. Um, don't go small. Always go big. Okay? and pat it down. You, you forget about all that stuff, the stretching, the stretch mark. The hats get brutalized. They just absolutely brutalize when I stretch them, like worse than this, you know? That's as far as I could take with my hands. If I could crank it open, it would go way, way worse than that. To get one whole size, I have to stretch it three and a half, four sizes sometimes, because it shrinks back, and in the ends you wind up getting a little stretch, you know? So you just destroy the hat, and then you have to go and reshape the hat, put it back together again, open the crown round, 
shape it with the crease and a pinch. Um, make the brim flanged, you know, because the brim is all shot and it's got all these weird things like this by the time you stretch it that intense. You basically kill the hat and then just almost put it back together again with steam and you know, reshaping. It's just, don't do it, you know. Only do it if you have a hat at home that's already small and you can't do anything with it. You just want to wear it, you know. Okay, do it. I'll stretch it, but um, to be honest, I never stretch my hats. If I have a situation like that, I just take the sweatband out. Um, now, if you're bald, balding, shaved head, buzz cut, super short hair, you can't do that because you're going to sweat through the hat then and make sweat stains. But if not, if you have, you know, pretty much hair all the way around this part, um, you know, decent hair, I guess. Uh, you can take your sweatband out. You just go into this little area here, you put a razor in there, start cutting the stitches, cut a few, and then, you know, it starts pulling out real easy. You just cut the rest of the stitches, take it out. That will gain you, like, two whole sizes, maybe more. I'm going to say about two entire whole sizes, and the hat won't do all this. It will stay exactly the same. It'll look perfect. So that's, that's what I do. I have a weird hack thing that I do. Probably people hate this, but what I do is I leave the leather in the front right here, like that much. So I have a part that goes against my sweat, my forehead, so I can wipe it down with a bandana. It feels comfortable. Um, my head's not against the, you know, here, so I'm not sweating through it. Still getting protection, and I'm getting that comfortable feeling. I can dry it so it doesn't stay wet and stuff. But all of this is gone, so it's way, way bigger. I just leave that little part. And it stays. It stays in there. You know, you have to just, like, uh, you know, remove this, cut it, you know. That's it. Um, I have one or two hats like that. You just never see the inside of it, you know. It's a weird hack thing of mine. So, yeah, hats are rainproof if they're fur felt. But the issue is... Are they thick enough? Are they good quality enough to look okay the next day? Some hats, yes. Some hats, no. Um, in general, most uh, dress hats, you know, most fedoras are not meant for that. Um, they're just not meant for it. Unless you have something, you know, super, 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 super fine, like, you know, I don't know, uh, some vintage hats, you know, that feel like butter, you know, like you could just tell they're beaver because they feel like the most velvety thing. Vintage hats are sometimes made of like the best, best felt a lot of the times, um, you know, good vintage hats. Or um, pre-bankruptcy Borsellinos from Quality Superior, from that one series, those are going to take rain fine, you know, you just got to keep your brim up, even if you're a brim down guy, keep it up when you're walking okay, and when you dry it because you want that flange to dry. You want to preserve the curve of the hat. That gives you your hinge your, to snap it down again. Okay, If it dries flat, you are going to get a flat brim. There's no snap anymore. It's very common. Don't put it down on the table. What happens, it just flattens out and then you have very floppy brim. Flaxid brim in the front is what a lot of people have. And just putting it down because the front takes the, the brunt of it, see? The back, not so bad. So usually people have still some snap there, but the snap shot in the front from putting their hat down on the table, okay? What you do after the rain is you flip it, you hang it, and you make sure the brim is straight. I sometimes go against the table edge, and I do something like this, and I just, you know, straighten out the brim on a straight edge. I go around, I do that kind of thing. The straight edge of a table. Try not to use like finger because you get little ripples. You know, try to use like long motions if you have to. And that's it. It dries the way you leave it. No surprises in the next day. It's exactly the way you want it. Hang it up like this. No heat. If you have a hot room, it's February, your whole house is just being heated and it's way, way warmer than outside. It's frosty. You got a lot of heat pumping. You don't realize it because you're in that environment so long. You know, you're dressed in a t-shirt and your undies or whatever. But uh, there's super, super stupid heat going. And it's dry and it's from the radiator and it's ruining your sweatband. So you've got to keep your hats away from heat. 
a cooler room, put it in the kitchen, crack the window, put it in the bathroom, crack the window or something, close the door so your whole house doesn't get freezing, you know? Just let a little cool air to come in as it's drying. Don't let it dry in that hot environment. You're going to get shrinkage after a few of those. Um, it happens so minutely you don't feel it. You get some shrinkage, you pull it down and stretch it out, shrinkage, you know. So that's another reason you wind up with the uh, leather bands that look wavy. You see in here there's waves in your leather. You're like, how, how did that happen? It shrunk, it dehydrated. That's what happens. Best way to get rid of that is to wear it. Sweat in it, wear it, let the heat and the sweat from your purse, you know, all that stuff from your body just flatten it out. Wear it, make sure it's nice and firm, you know, not super tight, but just, you know, lock it down. And that'll just, you know, a hat jack will do the same thing, you know, just put it in tight enough to flatten it, but not stretch it. And uh, I recommend just wearing it because the natural oils from a person keeps your hat, uh, you know, fresh. And if you don't wear it, a few years pass, five years, ten years, your hat's like a size small. It can happen. It happens a lot. Uh, Twenty years, forget it. Huge difference. Can't even wear it. They're up on the top of your hat like a yarmulke and stuff. So that's when I get a lot of stretches. People bring in hats that were stored in hot apartments, hot houses, for decades, and that was their one, I don't know, their beater hat, the one that they don't like to wear because the brim's too high, or they don't like uh, this and that about the hat, and it never gets worn. So it's shrunk. It gets so tight, it's like, you know, like this. So um, wear your hats. Yeah, wear them. Um, you know, if it's cold out, and uh, you, know, you feel like it, wear your, your beater hat, the one that you hate the most, or the one that's in the worst condition, put that on, let it get wet. Test it out, see how it gets in the, in the rain and the snow. Uh, let it get snowed on, rain on, put the brim in its up position, if it's a snap, straighten it out, you know, with a curve, straighten it, you know, not flat. And uh, keep it off the brim, hang it or invert it, and then uh, see how it does. Maybe it'll be perfect in the rain, you know? A lot of hats are perfect in the rain. The next day they dry, you don't even know anything happened at all. Other hats, they don't do well. They do that curling thing I showed you. They curl into like a triangle or a square. Um, it's kind of an ugly thing, you know? Some thinner, raw edge, you know, kind of hat. They do this, you know, all around it, little, little points. You might have something like that at home. Um, generally, again, raw edge, very thin felt, always long brims. They can't hold up their, their own brim, so they do this flop. Uh, there is these very big flat brim hats for ladies were trendy in the last few years. Um, a lot of them are made in China, most of them. And the felt is so thin, but they stiffen it with a huge plastic spray, just like coats and coats of it, so it's flat put cool like trimmings, feathers and stuff, which cost them, you know, like a buck. And then they sell the hat for, you know, like whatever, 35 bucks. And then your dealer sells it for like 75, 80 bucks and stuff. You know, you wind up, you know, paying something that's not really good quality. Um, the wool felt once that like a uh, covering that the stiffener that they spray on it, once it starts getting little folds and creases in it, just from holding it, you know, like from all kinds of stuff, you know, just from like walking around and holding it like this, it gets little microscopic creases, little cracks in that stiffener all over. And it gets worse and worse from putting it down on the table, all kinds of stuff, you know, just like throwing it on your seat at dinner, you know, putting your jacket on top of it. Eventually, that stiffener breaks down so much that it can't hold its weight anymore. It gets so soft that it starts flopping and falling. And you get this kind of woodstock thing, like this sort of vagrant, like, you know what those look like, those floppy woodstock, you know, really big brim, but it's falling down like a pillowcase instead of staying flat. Um, the floppy hippie hats. So the girls come in with these big hats. Um, they look like they might have paid a bunch. You know, it could be from like Banana Republic or um, Armani or whatever. It could be from expensive shops. It could be from cheap shops. It could be bought on the street. It could be bought at a good shop. But they're wool felt and they're basically made in China. And they're thin. Um, they can't hold all their weight. 
as soon as that plastic coating is gone, they fall. And it's like putting a pillowcase on your head. They just fall down. Um, good felt is where it's at. you got to buy good felt. It's got to be fur felt, and it's got to be something that we've heard good reviews about. Um, you know, like if JJ is selling a particular hat for like 40 years and you see it, you know, like every single year, most likely it's not a dud. Uh, if we get a hat and we think that the quality was shoddy or we had some problems with it, the sweatbands were ripping out or some stitches were bad or something, we put it on the discount rack. Ah, sorry, I got an itch back there. It's so hard to reach. It's like way back there. Anyway, yeah, we put it on the discount rack. It goes 50% and people are very happy, you know. Just don't wear it in bad rains or don't wear it in the rain and you're fine. But um, anything like that happens and the felt is just not reacting well to rain or steam, it's gone. It never has a second year. Um, hats that are good, um, you'll see a new hat that we experiment with coming back and coming back and you know it passed the test and we liked it, we had no issues with it. But yeah, if there's any issues at all with the hat, we just get rid of it. Um, we put it on the sale rack and say, okay, let's get rid of this as fast as we can. And uh, we don't even need to make a profit on it. We need to just get it out of here. You know? And um, sometimes sending it back to the company costs a lot, like the shipping and everything. So um, it's better to just discount it. And then your, you know, your clients are happy because they're getting a, uh, a hat that's cost and stuff. you know. But, um, yeah, not every fur felt hat does great in the rain. Some of them do pretty bad, badly. Others do immaculately. Some are mixed. You have one batch that's really good, and then the batch from a couple of years ago was great, and then all of a sudden they start sending you lemons. You're like, wait a minute, they changed this. Um, so you can't say one hat is good, one hat is bad. The, all you can really do is talk to somebody who sells them that you trust and, I guess, ask them. Why am I wearing my glasses? I'm not reading anything. Um, yeah, you can only talk to somebody who works with them, who steams a lot of them, who sells them, and, you know, ask them. Be like, Yo, are there any hats here you would say stay away from, or are there any hats you would say, you know, I should go for it because the quality is really good? Um, is there anything here you would say does really well in the rain? Um, is there anything I should stay away from as far as like you know the rain and stuff? They'll tell you, you know, if they know. Um, they don't care, you know. Uh, I might not s start calling out brands, you know, publicly online. I don't want, you know, like sixty-four, forty, six thousand four hundred and forty-five people to know that this particular company's hat is a lemon, that's just not, you know, fair. Uh, sometimes one batch is a lemon. You have a batch goes through an assembly line and they miss the, the stitch or something and, you know, something else comes out a little, and they come a little weird out of the assembly line. Um, we can just send them back as defectives um, or we could, you know, just sell them at a discount. Um, it's up to us. So, it happens. It does happen, especially with brands that make lots and lots and lots of hats. There's just no way around that. Um, I guess quality control, you know, inspection and stuff, but uh, apparently that doesn't always work. I'm going to say like this. Use your gut. Um, if you see something is super stiff and it's fur felt, okay, They're, it's not being vague. They're not like 100% fur blend. If it's um, Stetson, generally a 6X and up is definitely all fur felt. Okay, 4X used to mean fur. Now it's like a big area. I think it could mean a blend. So anything 6X and up, um, maybe 5, I don't know, but definitely 6X and up is all rabbit. Uh, when you start getting into the 10Xs, they become like 10X beaver, and they're much better quality. It used to be a little different. You know, it used to be 4, 6, 10... Then 20 and 30 and 100 were like the super duper ones where 10 was kind of like in the middle. But um, I guess it is sort of like that now still. But the 4X is a little bit like on the line. So what I'm going to say to you is um, buy fur felt. Buy something that you see is thick. It's stiff. It's got a little to it like western hats. Stuff like you know the Rancher, the Skyline, the, the Pawnee. 
the uh, Royal Flush, um, all those really thick, thick hats like that, um, full out Western hats, they're going to do good. Um, not only are they fur felt, they lob on a whole bunch of coats of stiffener. I mean, I don't know if you've ever felt like a Western straw. It's like, it feels like it was dipped in liquid plastic. They don't do that to the felt, but they dip it in kind of a invisible like coat. It's more of a spray and it gives it a little bit of, but uh, it still feels like felt, you know. It's like an internal stiffness. And that's good because then you could like, you know, roll it and shape it and that stiffener is what's grabbing it and holding it in place, you know. You kind of cool that, that hard shell for a second with hot steam and then it, you know, manipulates it. You manipulate with your fingers to make a roll. And then you wait a few seconds, hold it still, and while it cools, that hard shell of plastic you spray hardens again and it holds it into place. So Western hats, they're good in the rain. Generally, fur felt Western hats, ones from, you know, good brands, um, made in USA is always a good thing. 100% fur felt is when you see fur blends, that's, you know, they're keeping the price down. The hat might be fine. It could be beautifully bulletproof in every rain, but it might not, okay? Um, so I don't know. I don't have experience with the, uh, the wool blends. Um, we only carry the fur felt westerns, and we carry some what they call light felt, which are rollable, crushable, soft felts made of 100% wool of patented light felt. Um, that's the stuff you could roll into a cone and stick in your pocket, you know, or your uh, whatever, you know, a little can or something, or, you know, one of those uh, balsa wood boxes, those porcelain box things. You know what I'm talking about. I, mean, I thought I had one around here. My dormitory desk, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I thought it was around here, I guess not. But um, the crushable stuff is very soft. The authentic westerns are hard. They're heavy. They're hard. They've got a the sweatband. It's got a good read in it. You can't like bend it and make it into an oval. That that shape is like very stiff. You know, you have to break those in like a pair of western boots. They're rugged. Um, those hats are good for rain. As far as dress hats, they're not really meant for the rain. They're meant to take, like, okay, if you get caught in the rain, they're made out of this stuff in case you get caught out there. It's a gamble. Some of them do good, uh, good. some of them do great, some of them horrible. They get all but ruined, you know, they never look the same and you can't really steam them back that good anymore. When a hat has, like, inferior felt or it's just not stiffened enough or it's not thick enough, you can't just steam it into place. You have to fix that problem. You have to add more stiffener, you know, and um, it generally turns into a problem for life, you know, not just the time that, you know, it gets wet. So, yeah, some fedoras will do great. You could test one out if you're not really that picky about it. Let's say you have five hats and number five was your oldest one. It was the one that you care least about. It's the dirtiest one. It's the one you got first and uh, yeah, it's a little messed up and you don't really care if it gets, you know, any more messed up. That's the one you take and you try that as a test in the rain. See how it does. Wear it. Um, when you get home, flip it up. Hang it. You can even straighten your brim a little more with a straight edge, like on the straight edge of the table, or just, you know, with your hands, like this. Kind of gliding motions, or back here pushing. Yeah. Get your your brim straight and symmetrical. It should be in the up position, even if you flip your hat down in front, like this, you always draw your hat up. I know I'm being repetitive, but this is important. A lot of times I do this, and old men are like, no, I, I would never do that. <laughs> That's for those trendy young hipster guys. You know? No, it's not, no, no. It's for guys who do this, like you. But when the hat is drying, you dry it like this so that you preserve the flange, the curve, okay? You also keep that curve in the air. That means hang it so it's floating, put it upside down so it's floating, or you could put it on some sort of a head thing like this, as long as the head isn't tight. If it's like firm or tight, it's gonna you know, do something effective. 
you know, something like a banister or a small head, you know, kind of thing, or a, whatever, a vase or something, a stand, hat stand. Those things are all good, you know. As long as the brim is not on the table or touching something, banging into a wall, you let it dry like that and you're fine. You also check the crown. If you're a crown squeezer and it's like all crooked, open the crown for a second, gently, gently feel for the center crease, it'll pop into place, and then gently feel for the two pinches. Not hard, it'll pop right into place with its stock shape. Now, hang it up, do the thing with the brim, okay? Any way you leave it wet, it will dry the next morning. So if your hat is not doing well in the rain, it looked like crap the next day, because, you know, yeah, it's because you did this, and you put it down on its brim, so now that looks like that permanently, all the time. It snaps back into it. Every time you feel for the creases, it snaps back into this now, because it was wet and dried that way. Drying in that shape is just like steaming that shape, and it's even, it's harsher, you know, totally soaked compared to just steaming it, yeah. So that's your new permanent shape until you steam it out. So what you want to do before you put the hat to bed, your wet hat, open it and just gently touch it. You'll find that crease, just it pops in, see? And then here too, you just feel for it. I'm barely putting any pressure, I'm just like the weight of my hand, that's it. Just the weight of my hand on there. Let's see if I could show that. Just the weight of your hand alone does it. Yeah, that's it, no pressure. And then you'll feel the pinch go into place. Whatever was steamed into there will remain there. Make sure it's kind of like a good pinch. Some pinches are like little I shapes or D shapes. You know, like an I, elliptical, or it's like a uh, kind of a D, like a, a half moon, kind of a half circle shape. That's like a cattleman or a rancher crease looks like that. Anyway. So yeah, um, Western hats, really, really good dress hats um, are going to do well. And some dress hats will do amazingly, some dress hats will do horribly. I'm going to say maybe out there a good, like, I don't know, 70-80% of the dress hats do really, really well in a hard storm, as long as you dry them the right way. Uh, the other 30%, you might get a little bit of curling and stuff, uh, I'm going to say where Maybe 10% of those you get it, of that 30 will be a lot of curling. So you have to buy stuff that just uh, feels good, gets good reviews, um, and they're not being vague about the uh, fiber content. You know, make sure you know that if the, the thing sounds too too good to be true, you know, there you go. If they also say made of imported and domestic materials, that means it. Made, if they say made in USA of imported and domestic materials, that could mean they take the worst, worst Chinese crap, worst felt, the stuff they used to cut in kindergarten, that felt, really, that wall stuff, and then they, you know, they stretch it on hat blocks and they make hats out of it, and they dress it up really nice with like, you know, cool feathers and like a cool 1950s marketing logo and stuff. And they jack the price way, way up to like $185. And you're like, wait a minute, all these Stetsons are like 210 to 245 This hat here from this real reputable uh, store is 185 Whoa, what's it, where is it made? Made in USA of domestic and imported materials. Tiny little thing in the bottom. It's so small they put it in the bottom right hand corner of YouTube so that the, the little numbers that tells you how long it is covers it up. You can't even read it, it's so small. Domestic and imported materials means that the whole hat can be made out of Chinese felt from Indonesia, Chinese, whatever the cheapest stuff they could buy and imported and domestic means they could have gotten one piece from the USA, like the hat lining or the cloth band for inside. They got that from a guy in Brooklyn. Okay, now we can say domestic and imported materials. Okay, they, they take all these crappy parts and they assemble them in some room in Brooklyn or whatever 
to get them out. Um, they jack the price way, way up, and they give a great marketing deal. You know, they train everybody to be like, you know, dead on. But it's still made out of the worst kindergarten felt crap you can imagine. So if something was vague like that, that was a great tangent. I should get an award for that tangent. Anyway, um, made in the USA is a good thing. Okay, made in the Czech Republic is generally a good thing too for felt. Uh, they're an old European country that you know that's famous. They have a history of making hats. Uh, made in Spain, made in Italy, um, USA, made in Australia, made in New Zealand. These are generally good hats. Um, don't buy a hat just because it says Stetson on it. Stetson has things that range from made in China, made in Mexico, made in, you know, Europe, like they're really nice capped, to made in USA. They have all sorts of stuff. Um, there may be 20 caps in a Stetson catalog, and then we'll see one of them that's denim that we like, and they'll sneak that one in, it happens to be made in China. Like, what? This costs the same as all the others, and this one's made in China. Yeah, it just is. Um, okay, now we're going to skip that one. Now, sometimes the hats look so good that we just order it. You know, we don't know. Um, companies, good companies do that. Um, not everybody cares. Most people care. Chinese people even care. You know, the, the Chinese friends I've had always you know, say things like that. They don't want made in China. You know, they know that it's kind of cheap stuff. But um, nowadays they're kind of getting better at making guitars. I gotta say, some of the Indonesian and Chinese guitars they're making, the cheap ones for $99, they're getting good, you know? Um, so I'm not really, I'm not attacking that cheap stuff. I think cheap stuff is good. I like cheap stuff. Most people also start with cheap stuff and graduate to better stuff like JJ's. You know, they start at a cheap stuff, or they, they start at, with cheap stuff, or they go to a chain store that's overinflating cheap stuff and selling it as expensive stuff. They do that and then eventually find us because, you know, they got more into it and they said, you know what, there's got to be a shop in New York that has the real deal. Where is all the celebrities going to? Where is everybody going to? Uh, where are the movies getting the hats from and the commercials? Where did Conan and SNL, SML get their hats from for their skits and stuff? Um, yeah, there's one place. It's pretty much us. Um, we've been, you know, around and around other, other places were iconic and disappeared, um, but we're the the guys, you know, uh, JJ Hat Center on uh, Fifth Avenue, it's 310 Fifth Avenue in New York, between 31st and 32nd Street. Um, you could call us to 800-622-1911, speak to somebody there, uh, Benji, who's like the nicest guy in the world, uh, Colin, who's our Western guru, who knows so much about Western shaping, uh, Akubras and Western Hats. He's a great guy. Um, we can speak to Jose, who's there two days a week now because of COVID, the manager. He's the guy who's there almost as long as me. Um, great, great man. A uh, very friendly, warm person. So, um, there's a lot of people there that can help you. That was a hell of a tangent. I almost forgot what I was talking about. Um, but um, the waterproofness of hats is a big thing. So I'm here to lay it down. Um, they're made out of rainproof stuff if they're fur felt, but it's gotta be stiff, it's gotta be thick, one or the other, or both, or it's gotta be insanely good quality felt. Um, or just one of those, one of those brands that's just like a fluke, like they've always made consistent stuff. You know, like Celentino and, um, Akubra. They've always, always made it consistent stuff and they never made bad stuff. Um, I can't think of any stuff that did poorly in the rain from them. Their stuff is just really, really good. Um, and it all comes in from the same source. It's not like they get it from different places. It's all, you know, they make their own stuff or they got somebody who provides the bodies for them, like a proprietary thing. Where other brands, like a brand like Stefano, they might get things from Italy from different people and put their lining on it. They're kind of more of like a importer, you know. All right, um, hats, yes, they are indeed waterproof, but not all of them look great the next day. Go with the super, super hats, you know. Um, I'm going to say things like a Cubra, they're really good for rain quality. Uh, Celentino, very nice. 
Some of the Stetsons, I'm going to say, uh, the, all the Westerns, fantastic. Every one of the Westerns are real good. The exception of maybe the Open Road and the Dune, which are kind of medium, because they're kind of like between a dress hat and a Western. They're not the same thing. They have uh, thinner felt that's very, very stiff. So, yeah, their stuff is rainproof, and it's going to do very well, but not the same as the pure western hats, you know, the real deal ones and stuff, so I'm going to say don't wear your fedoras in the rain. If you think you're going to get caught out there, you know, wear something cheaper, uh, just wear something cheap if you can. Wear a rain cover from us, they're like shower caps, they kind of suck, they make your brims go like pfft. Rain covers are meant for hard hats like westerns. So if you got a fedora, it's going to be like elastic, like a shower cap, and mess it all up. But yeah, it'll keep it dry. You know, you tuck the elastic part in and stuff. It's just like a clear shower cap. Um, I don't know what we sell them for, ten bucks or something. You could you could ask. We have them. I don't think on our website, but if you call us, eight hundred six two two nineteen eleven, rain covers. Tell them Kev, Kev sent you. You know. Yeah, if you order anything the cost of me, yeah, tell them. I'd like them to know that. That's it's cool. Let them know I'm still working and I still care about the company and uh, I do miss working there. It's been you know, like seven months, but uh, I can't catch COVID. I gotta stay here and take care of business until uh, it blows over. So um, I will be back and uh, I'm gonna stay here entertaining you people through this whole pandemic. Uh, I know this whole year was pretty much a uh, you know not great year but hopefully you know some of the things that we said here and talked about together made it a little bit more uh, friendly you know maybe we made a couple of friends along the way uh, had a couple of laughs uh, maybe even learned something and uh, you know these things make it a little more tolerable can you imagine if we had to go through the pandemic without the internet <laughs> can you imagine that oh my god it would be like yeah I don't even want to think about that right don't think about that Kevin Think about that. All right. So yeah, I say don't wear your fedoras or designate some stuff, you know, for the rain. That's like your your hat that you don't care if it gets beat up. And the thing is that a lot of hats do perfectly. That's the thing, but it's a risk. You could take the hat with the rawest edge, the thinnest felt, the biggest brim, um, go out there and just have it just dumping water on it for like, you know, walking home for five hours in the rain. The next day you flip the brim up, you squeeze, get your pinch right, you hang it, you know, I mean, the next day you look at it and it's perfect. That can happen too. Um, as long as you dry it perfectly in the right shape, you know, with a flange, brim straight on the flange, you know, keep it straight. Get the original crease there or whatever crease you had Get it set, hang it, or invert it, and that's it, away from heat. Put a little breeze there if you need to, if you think it's hot. Um, and you'll do okay um, most of the time, not always. A lot of the times it's a disaster. Other times it's just something shifts and it doesn't look new anymore. You just get like a little, you know, one little thing shifts or something. You're like, oh, I gotta steam that out. Then you start steaming it out, and the steam messes something, and then everything else is messed up, and it doesn't look new anymore. So things like that can happen. Um, it's usually it's minor. Sometimes it's major, and it's disastrous. I'm gonna say again, um, try not to wear your dress hats in torrential downpours. Uh, if you get caught out there, and you don't know uh, that it's gonna rain, you just have your felt hat on. Your hat might do okay, it might do perfectly, you never know. But like I said, it's like a Russian roulette thing. Sometimes it's perfect, sometimes not. You get lucky with some hats. You might buy three temples and uh, one of them does horribly, but your old one does amazingly. And you're like, why is the old one doing you know, uh, great in the rain? I don't know. Uh, one guy sprayed more stiffener on it than the other guy. You know? It's hard to say, but it's like that kind of a gamble. Um, Get your brim right, get everything out there right, hang it up, do the right thing, you should be okay. Um, with the westerns, the akubras, you're taking less of a gamble, that's better. Also, you could buy what they call a rain hat, which is kind of like a rain coat, poplin stuff. They come in raincoat colors, black or British tan, 
we sell them, we sell two or three. When we have 20% off, like now, you just get it, you know? Um, I think there's no tax when you order mail order, right? And you ship out of state. So you're gonna get like 20% off plus that, you know, eight and a half. You're not paying New York uh, sales tax like if you went into the shop. Um, that can be a really cheap purchase. I think there's no tax anyway under $110 and there's no tax on mail order purchases. But, um, yeah, it's a $75 hat and you would take 15 off, so it would be 60 bucks. And, you know, so, green hat is a good thing. They look cool. It's something cool to wear with your trench coat and it, you don't mess up your more expensive hats. Um, yeah, you, you know, you could get a $75 rain hat from us or you could probably find a copy of it somewhere on Amazon for $25, $35. That's, you know, Chinese or whatever, too. You know, you never know. But, Westerns, yeah, most of the time, I think you're okay. Um, the Royal Flush has a very particular type of pencil roll. That, I think you got to be very careful, you know, how you dry it and everything. Um, yeah, that one, I don't think you'll have much problem with that, but, yeah, westerns, yeah, I'm going to stand behind them, you can wear them, but no, you know, a lot of it's up to you, the way they dry is the way you leave it the night before, and stuff too, um, most of these things can be fixed with a little bit of steam too, um, if you live near a hat shop, or if you, you feel you could do it yourself, you know, sometimes a little spray of stiffener and some steam. Um, ask me questions. You got any questions? I'm happy to tell you um, the answer if I know it. Um, I don't know all the stets and models and stuff. We only carried a certain amount of them at JJ's and stuff, you know. But uh, I can answer your questions on the stuff, you know, in our catalog for sure. It's uh, jjhatcenter.com. I don't have to tell you www dot, right? Because like everything is kind of www dot. Yeah, I don't have to say that. All right. Let's put something cool on here. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm.